hello guys and welcome to gamdaris tv a very beautiful education system happening right away i think nigeria is really learning from Ghanaians. so this is um, a lecture room where um, a particular lecture a particular case study is going on the sweet part of it is like you see how conducive the environment is how conducive the classroom is i remember someone telling me how the beautiful education system is ongoing right there in your country now look at the amazing things that nigerian education system is doing so i think that nigeria is gradually learning from Ghanaians. enjoy this video till the end subscribe like and drop an amazing comment in the comment section see you guys later what treatment process what is applicable in our environment and what we do in our journey and we'll talk about the instrumentation, which is the practical aspect. We'll be going downstairs after this talk, we'll go downstairs for the practical part of it. So, I'm trying to, here we are trying to talk about the relationship between water treatment process and community medicine. Why are you here to undertake this uh, study or this course? You know, from uh, community medicine or doctors to be in community medicine. You are, you are you're saddled with the, relation, the, the, the responsibility of tracing a course and managing the spread of diseases. Now, when it comes to water itself, we feel that the majority of the sickness or diseases that spread in the human in our environment move, use, use this water as a media, as a means of uh, this movement or spreading. So, we tackle the issue of uh, waterborne diseases. So there's a strong connection between water treatment and community medicine. That's why it's very important for you not just to understand, but also to understand the responsibility that you are carrying on your shoulders as doctors to be in this field. So you you start with the responsibility of what preventing uh, waterborne diseases, of improving health, public health, promoting hygiene and environmental health. In this case of uh, preventing water, uh, waterborne diseases, like I said, we our consumers, the people of Enugu State, not just, not just producing the water, but make it cheap enough for people to consume and safe enough for people to consume. When you talk about affordable, when you talk about possible water, it means water that is safe for consumption, water that is good. When you consume it, you know, it doesn't have any side effect, no harm to your body. And it meets up the standards because we don't just generate a um, result, we don't just monitor what we work with standards. We have set standards, WHO standards, we have Nigerian standards, we must follow and ensure that our water exceeds those standards. Every good state water corporation, like I said, generates water, distributes it, and make sure it is affordable in a, in a way that is good to people to for the people to consume. So we have different departments that work together in Kumo. There's a synergy between these departments, the production unit, distribution unit, um, and then we have the quality management unit. First of all, water is generated by the production unit. We have different areas in production. We have the actually um, um, Ajali uh, um, water scheme where you are supposed to go the water that we generate from there is surface water so we get water from the river and it's processed and sent to the state. states we have a key augmentation scheme what we have there is artisan borehole that is a borehole that brings water on its own without pumps it has enough force to push the water through the soft, through the, uh, um, through the uh, from groundwater to the surface for consumption, so we treat and we send to Enugu. We also have a giant um, head, um, head works. What we use there is water from the spring. So we harness spring water, treat it and distribute water. We have different reservoirs where this water from the production, it ends up in those reservoirs. Then the work of the distribution team starts from that particular point. We have the network of uh, pipelines that extend from the reservoir down to people's um, um, houses at different diameters. This, um, um, these um, pipelines are different diameters depending on the direction it's going to and the volume of water that is carried. So the, 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 the major work of the distribution, uh, this distribution unit 
is to ensure that the water gets to your home. Now, this water traveling through the pipe goes through a lot of things. Sometimes you might have bus pipes, sometimes you might have uh, uh, leakages or uh, waste water pumps in some demo, something that was happening along the way. So, but in, uh, to ensure that the water getting to your home is safe for you to drink, the quality management department come out to do their work. We ensure that the bacterial level, the chemical level, and the physical level of that water is at the approved um, level for humans to consume. So that brings us to the work of the quality management department. So like I said, we have the responsibility of analyzing the quality of water at the production end, at the consumer's end, and as well, we upgrade the quality of the water depending on what the result of the test that draws your conclusion and then you prescribe your drugs. Is that not it? That's what we do in water quality management. We also do tests. We run certain tests and know the quality of the water that we are handling or we are having. And then we upgrade the quality to make sure that it meets up with the WHO standard or the Nigerian standard. And that we don't find ourselves wanting in any way or endangering the life of the public. You understand me? So we also go ahead to ensure that we have the health and the health and safety of the staff. We have contractors that are working, so we have different staffs that are here. We ensure that people on field that are working are what are safe in their work environment. And whatever we do, we ensure that the public within our work environment is also safe. Now, there's a part of what that is not here, the EIA. We have the environmental impact assessment. It's also Part of our duty before we establish any treatment system or any uh, uh, production firm or any production unit, we ensure that within that place we are contributing positively to the people in that environment and we, are, we ensure that we are not giving uh, harming them in any way. So, the EIA helps us, it's like a research work, it helps us to find out if we will interact with people in that community to find out if citing our. Our, our production unit in that place will harm them, what positive effects it has on them, what positive effects like employment, supplying them with water, and so many other things. Then on our own side, we also check how much we are going to get. Is it profitable to us as a, as a, a corporation? You understand me? Can we, is it a project that can last for a long time? That, that is sustainable? So these are part of the screen. That is our primary definition of water. And we also know that water is composed of water, hydrogen and oxygen in a ratio of 2 to 1. Also known as a universal solvent. When you call water a universal solvent, what does it mean? Can anybody tell me here? Can you explain why this water is a universal solvent? Can anyone tell me? Okay, water is a universal solvent because Almost all substances can dissolve in the water. Reason: It has the hydrogen ion, which is positive, and the oxygen, oxygen uh, which is negative. And this charge that they have helps you to relate with other substances easily. It also has a, a high surface tension, and that high surface tension helps it to penetrate into the space of other substances. So it can break substances and dissolve them easily. Then it's wide range of temperature. So you see water stayed in liquid state from 0 degrees centigrade to 100 degrees centigrade. This is a very wide range of uh, temperature to accommodate other substances. You understand me? That's why we say water is a universal solvent. These are the properties that help you to become a universal solvent. So we have sources of water. Before we go to sources of water, we know that the world, the world itself is made up of about 71% of water. The entire world is made up of about 71% of water. The human body has about 55 to 60% of water. The blood itself is about 83% of water. So you can see water showing up itself in every aspect of our environment, of our life. We cannot separate ourselves from water. It's not possible. Is it possible? No, it's not possible. So it's very important for us to know how important water is so that we can sustain water. You understand me? 
you know, the sources of water, we have to know the sources of water, the natural one and the artificial source. From the natural source, we have water from the surface area, that's in the surface of uh, the earth, the surface water, that is river, lake, fresh water, spring water, and then we have brown water, water from the well, that is water from under the earth, the, uh, the well and borehole. So these are the two major types of water that we have. But we also have artificial water, like where you dissolve sea, you can use that water. When you recycle waste water, it's another artificial way of what? Generating water. Then you have at, uh, atmospheric uh, generated uh, water, like some, some industries release chemicals into the atmosphere. And because when this rain comes down, they dissolve this chemical and fall as what? Acid rain. So if you see that the chemical composition of the water has changed, that's where you have acid rain. You have natural disaster. When there's earthquake, there's certain gases are released from the atmosphere, they go into the dissolve itself in this water and change the quality of the water in town. Then you have anthropogenic activities. I suppose you understand what anthropogenic activities are. These are human activities. Sure. Like uh, when you apply your fertilizers and everything, rain comes in, they wash off those fertilizers and some of the fertilizers and chemicals there. You see them running into our water body. You understand me? So these are part of the petrochemical waste along the road. You see uh, the tanker will fall. We will, we, the will fall on the road, discharge this uh, 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 crude oil or uh, petrochemical uh, material along the way. Water will come, wash it into our water body. Everything seems to what? Recycle in the environment. So it is very important for us to understand this and now know how to maintain it. So this works for this brings up the oxidation. When civilization comes close to where a water body is, the water parameters will change, the water quality will change. The physical, chemical, and biological are all water parameters. You understand me? So these things will change. So when you see people coming close to where water body is, or uh, is cited, mm -hmm. standards, systematic methods means and two techniques to check, maintain, and prescribe treatment procedure for the water. So assurance, you have to create a, a, systematic, a systematic way of checking, maintaining, and treating. You understand me? So it is based on your analytical findings on that water, your analytical techniques that you apply on that water that will help you to work to create that systematic way. It is very important that when you do water treatment or when you do analysis, you keep record for track. As in, to keep records. Over time, you could use that record to generate some uh, information that will give you a trend. You understand me? Which I said is very important in your in your in your Don't write it. WSS, water supply surveillance. Water supply surveillance. Keeping a very careful watch. Keeping a very careful watch from the public health point of view about the safety and acceptability of drinking water sources. Are we good? Yeah. WSS Water Supply Surveillance. WHO defines water supply surveillance as keeping a very careful watch. Keeping a very careful watch at all times from the what public health point of view and i think that's why we are here today are we right doctors and you know what happened is this so just like the doctor uh taught you so what happened is this? you guys know the water pump water carriage with everything so it's a whole ball game so and you can tell it a lot of people will be healthy. Are we good? Mm. Keeping a very careful watch from the public health point of view over the safety, number one condition, what safety, just like she taught you, safe water. Are we good? Over the safety, and then again, the what acceptability, they have to be acceptable. Uh, they don't give you brownish water, very turbid water. In fact, no, I'm no longer thirsty. Thank you. Because what it is 
not acceptable. You say, ah, if, if, if you deem it fit, you can drink. If you don't deem it fit, you can go it instead of drinking and rushing to the uh, convenience. Are we good? So, safe water is very, very important. Based on that, we go into how do we monitor safe water? Just like she taught, she taught you potable water. What is potable water? She taught you water that you can drink without any adverse effect all your life time. And potable water, taste. What else? Temperature. Hey, it's, is it hot? Is it cool? You use your, your body parts. Most of the out, uh, the uh, skin. Are we good? Okay. So we turn them organoleptic. But still in the uh, physical, we have other parameters in the physical uh, dimension that are not organoleptic. Something like electrical conductivity. And what is electrical conductivity in short words? The ability of a, a water to carry or conduct electrical charges or currents across its surface. Are we good? Okay. And don't like we told you in the WS, um, WHO and the NSDWQ standards, the limit is 1,000 1,000 micromoles per year. Or cement. It shouldn't exceed 1,000. Carry the responsibility to teach the public how important it is to have safe water. We need to teach them how important it is for them to monitor their own water and how to handle their water so that they can use it tomorrow in a way that is safe for them and their generations to come. You understand me? So, if they, don't, they might not have this information, that they don't have this information that you have right now. We are privileged to have this information. So, therefore, if you pass it to them, it's your duty, it's my duty to pass it to them. Thank you, Thank you, no, 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 no. Some years back, like uh, 10 years back, if you were in that's a 10 years back. Hmm? 10, 15 years back, we knew that water was getting to almost every very very state. I mean, the supply was better than the way it was at the last dispensation. I mean, so when it's not actually out for the lot of things went on, but right now we are coming back and uh, we are ensuring that uh, we are still in the process. We are still in the process. And frankly speaking, as at Four years or five years back, I think many areas didn't even have water. But some people are recording water in their places presently. Abi, you are hearing about, if you are not experiencing it, you are hearing about it, that water is getting to pieces and I have not had water for five years. Am I lying? So we have the gradual process. Somebody who is sick cannot get well overnight now. Yeah. You take the drugs and then until you gradually, gradually, your whole system will balance and you get rid So we are taking our drugs now. <laughs> so we are taking our drugs. Okay? So we wanted to utilize to ensure that our workers are safe and the environment is safe. So we can save our work from there. And we you should not let our life and So, a lot of hope for What I want to make as a good and